I did my technical interview yesterday. I did my technical interview yesterday. It came as a surprise because I went to Yosemite over the weekend. I think it was like Friday night. I was sitting by a campfire. It was very cozy. I was talking to my friends and I don't know why. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna check my emails, which was a terrible decision because it was like 10 p.m. and I saw an email that came in at 7 p.m. on a Friday that told me my interview was yesterday. So the Tuesday following. Naturally, I stopped enjoying the campfire. I was like, oh crap, I will be in Yosemite until Sunday and then I probably won't have any energy to prepare on Sunday and then I only have Monday to prepare. It was, it was a whole deal. So lesson from that is do not check your emails when you are trying to take a break because things could happen even at 7 p.m. on a Friday. Let's talk about the interview yesterday. The interview was an hour long. It was supposed to be a short intro followed by a sequel round. And then the last portion is uh, case studies and any questions I may have. Right after the interview, I thought I did really well. I thought I did really well because I was able to answer all the questions. I never stumbled and be like, hey, can you give me like more information or a hint because I don't know what you're talking about. I was never like that. And because of that, I thought I did really well. And then after half an hour, an hour, the adrenaline rush from the interview wore off. And I started to think like, okay, did it really go that well? Hmm. And my answer to myself was, okay, there are a couple places that could have done better. For example, in the sequel portion, part of the question required me to join the two tables. And I had, let's say, table A and table B. I left joined table A with table B. I forgot to state the assumption that I assume table A has all the unique keys versus table B does not. That was a terrible assumption to begin with. On top of that, I didn't state that assumption. So I just went about joining my tables, answer the question. The interviewer asked about, well, great. What if we want to show information that was in table B and we want the like aggregation of table B's keys to show up as zero in this result query that you wrote? I was like, huh, good question. I was like, well, you could do a union or you could do a full join, which doesn't exist in my sequel, but you could like manually maneuver it. And it just stopped there. And the interviewer was like, what about a, what about a right join? And I'm like, damn it, crap. <laughs> Obviously I didn't say damn it, crap. I was like, oh yeah, of course you could also do that. But in practice, we rarely use right join. We just use left join and we flipped the order of two tables. So that was one place that I was questioning my performance at. Another place is the case study portion. It was hard for me to figure out whether the breadth that I'm reaching and the depth that I'm reaching to answer the question was enough for the interviewer. For example, um, I'm making this up. If the interviewer asked me, what are the experimentation options? And I started listing, you could do A-B testing, but that's not the best. You could also do uh, synthetic control, or you can do like A-B testing, but test it by um, geographical regions. So like I went on about that, and I realized I was talking for a long time about these different options and what are the pros and cons. And I realized that the interviewer wasn't saying anything. And I was like, am I getting, am I talking too much about these different options or should I have jumped deeper into just A-B testing? So I asked, I was like, do you want me to talk more about the, these different options or do you want me to dive into a specific one? To which the interviewer was like, oh, let's just talk about a different thing. 
And I was like, okay. <laughs> because it was a video interview. I was busy taking notes on my iPad and kind of brainstormed to myself. And because I'm like taking notes like a maniac, I really wasn't looking at the screen to see the interviewer's body language or their facial expression. It was particularly hard to see the facial expression. So those are the two places that upon further consideration, I was like, you know what? I really don't know how I did. So in conclusion, I was able to answer all the questions. I just don't know if my answers were good enough for the interviewer. But after that, I was really, really glad that at a minimum, I got my first technical interview over with, and that was such a huge relief. I celebrated by not studying or job searching for a day. I thought I would be really happy just like not having to worry about that anymore, but no, no, my mind is like, you're not studying, you're not studying. How could that be right? You're looking for a job. How could you not be studying? I just have this like thought in the back of my mind keep nagging me even though I've already decided that I wasn't gonna study for that day. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to find out about the interview results. Now just a waiting game. Just finished the first study session. I'm making coffee because I'm exhausted. So much happened yesterday. I already told you about an interview. But after the interview, I decided that yesterday was my mini celebratory milestone so that I wasn't going to study anymore. I'll just do whatever the heck I want for a day. I worked. And then at night, I was going to drive up to San Francisco to see a friend who's visiting. Before I left, I heard like cats meowing outside. They've been meowing all day, but I was so concentrated on interviewing that I didn't go out and investigate. So right before I left for SF, I went out to see what was going on. There were not one cat out there, not two cats out there. There were three stray cats that just appeared out of nowhere in my apartment complex yesterday. I say they're stray cats, but what I really think is that somebody used to have all three of these cats and they just decided that they don't want them anymore and dropped them off in an apartment complex because there are so many people who live here and somebody has got to want to help them. I was in a rush to leave for SF. I just took wet food and water out there to feed them. And then I went up to, to see my friends and that was all fun. We were on our way back at 10.30 p.m. and my tire pops on the highway. Oh my God. I was so glad that my partner was in the car with me. I've never had a car tire pop or just any kind of car issue on the highway before. I definitely would have panicked had my partner not been in the car with me. So we were sitting in the car, stranded on the highway, right next to SFO for like over an hour. Because this was next to SFO, like there were a lot of traffic, so we couldn't go out and change the tire ourselves. It was dark, we didn't have any lights besides our four-way. There were a lot of cars driving by, we didn't want to die. So we had to wait for AAA to rescue us. I was very grateful that this guy came to save us, but he was very sassy. I opened the trunk and he goes, take all of this shit out of your trunk first and put it in your car. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Anywho, yesterday was eventful, almost too eventful. I didn't get a whole lot of sleep, needless to say. I didn't get home until past midnight, so this coffee today is much, much needed. <laughs> I 
just spent the last two hours looking for jobs. I applied to eight jobs already, but I think I need to pull myself back and actually try to study some. I don't know. I'm debating whether I should pick up Python again. The last job that I interviewed for, if I were to move forward to the next round, then there is a Python component, I believe. Other jobs also ask for Python as well, and I just haven't done it for a while, so maybe I should practice, And because I'm pretty sure I forgot a lot of it already. <laughs> I'm done studying. When I say studying, I mean I'm done looking for jobs. I said I was gonna do Python. I did Python maybe for like five minutes and then I got suckered back into looking for jobs. Today's job count is now nine. What do we eat today? It's a very good question. What is this? Potatoes. We got some corn salsa, some chicken, for protein, some peppers, quinoa, and a head of lettuce. Everything I just showed you, except now it's in a bowl form, because I can't imagine all of these individually tasting good. I have bowls so often these days that I feel like regardless of what kind of leftover I have in the fridge, I can make a bowl out of it. And most of the time, it tastes all right. And sometimes it tastes great. And sometimes it tastes um, hard to swallow. Let's see how this one is. Not too bad on its own, but could use some like lemon tahini dressing. Since I don't have that, I think I'll just toss some hummus in. So much better. check out this nice donut on my car and my uh, extremely ripped tire. Could you imagine that I was driving with this on the 101? That is really bad. I don't know if this tear because it's time or because somebody slashed it. I was only up in SF for four hours. When I drove up, my car was completely fine. I parked by the side of the road and when I got back to my car after the four hours, I saw that the tire pressure was low. So I was like, well, that's not a big deal. It's much cooler in SF, so it could just be the temperature causing the tire pressure to be low. I didn't check. I just went um, and got on the highway. The more I drive, the more I hear a noise that wasn't there before. And eventually, like I heard a popping sound, but I thought like I drove over like a wire or a pothole, so I didn't really care about it. And then a minute later, I heard another pop. And then I can feel like I'm not riding on my wheel anymore. I'm like riding on my wheel rim. So I had to pull over and see that giant hole on my tire and wait to be rescued by AAA. <laughs> Time to get back to work. I feel like I've been working for forever, but I'm still not done. I have to go to Costco real quick, so I have something to eat for dinner. Earlier this week and late last week, I was so concentrated on studying and prepping for the interview, and over the weekend, I wasn't even home. I was in Yosemite, so I haven't gone grocery shopping for like two weeks now. There's not a whole lot in there anymore. <laughs> so I have to go to Costco and... Um, eat dinner and get back to work because I have a presentation tomorrow at 8 a.m. Life is great. It is extremely shocking that Costco did not have what is that? I have to work after we work work. I didn't finish my presentation. 8 a.m.
bright and early. Back that work when it's pitch dark. Hopefully this doesn't take me too long. On my way to Costco, my father called me. Typically when my father calls me, something is going on. Doesn't ever just call me out of nowhere. And today he called me and I thought something was up and he needed to talk to me about something important, but he just called to um, check in on me. And he's like, I wonder how your uh, interview went. I told him the same thing that I told you. I was like, you know, I felt really good right after but after an hour or two hours, I no longer feel that good about it. So he's saying, well, you know, it's fine. You got this, you know, the typical encouraging stuff. And he hung up. It was a really short call. It was like two minutes. And when I was walking out of Costco, I got a text from my dad that said, oh, hold on, let me, let me, let me read it. He said, oh, daughter, I think you were doing really well. I'm really proud of you. Um, and you have to be confident in yourself. That meant so much to me because I think just like minority parents, like Asian parents, uh, like minority parents in general, from what I heard, are not very verbal or expressive with their like love or encouragement and I rarely growing up heard my dad say that he's proud of me and it made me really happy that he did that yeah it made me really happy that he told me that he was proud of me like this journey is hard and I give myself pep talks all the time to keep going but from time to time like it feels so good to hear it from somebody else to recognize your work and effort like if, especially that person is someone whose opinion you care a, a lot about so that just made me feel like i can maybe do two more hours of python every day <laughs> Coming out of the study session today, I spent so much time looking for jobs that I, you know, was kind of feeling deflated because I have applied to like 50 plus jobs now. And this goes back to what I was saying last week. Like every week I feel like I have a mini episode of like me fighting with myself, just trying to get myself out of a funk. But my dad did that for me today and I'm just so happy. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shower now. I'm gonna fall asleep reading my book. I'm gonna call it a night here. I will see you back here again soon, aka next week. Bye.